Welcome back. My next guest is Elaine Affelbaum, our Superintendent of Parks and Recreation for the Town of Clarkstown. Welcome, Elaine. Hello, George. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Elaine, uh, you're, um, you've done a great job as our Superintendent of Parks and Recs. We've kind of gone through a, uh, a really tough time with COVID. We're coming out the other end. We're um, uh, kind of moving through to what life after COVID or, you know, is, is what we hope it's going to be, is going to be like. So we've got a lot of initiatives, a lot of things going on. So before we get to that, just a little reminder for our residents. Uh, tell, tell our residents a little bit about you, your background, how long you've been, been with the town. Uh, this year I'm actually with the town uh, 40 years. Uh, that includes a couple of years part-time as well. So it's a big milestone for me. Um, I went to college for Ithaca, at Ithaca College for Recreation Management, Athletic Administration. I started working here and I've just worked up through the ranks. But we couldn't get rid of you, huh? No. <laughs> so, uh, so, and how long have you been superintendent? Uh, approximately five years. All right. I know uh, you came in uh, shortly after I did and done a great job, a lot of new initiatives. We won't get into, you know, some of those things, but the things like the, you know, uh, we've renovated our uh, street school, which we were supposed to, that had been going on for years and years of the talk. So that, that's been done. We've renovated our pools. Um, new bathhouse at Lake Danuet, the dog park, a lot of new programs. Um, um, so just a lot of great things that have happened, you and I working together, and I want to thank you for that. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a good five years. But let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what it was like for you during COVID and some of the things that uh, your department was able to do during COVID, and then we'll quickly pivot to uh, what's coming up. Well, it was a challenging time for everybody, obviously the unknown, never in a million years did I think it would last as long as it did. Um, we rethought, you had to think out of the box a little bit, and we went to some online programming, uh, Facebook Live programming, uh, and a lot of virtual contests and events and activities. We ran some matzah hunts and egg hunts and you know all kinds of pet contests and craft contests and stuff like that, and the people just really the, the longer it took, the more people that have sent things in. I showed you, you know, last week we had folders this thick of responses, of entries for, for our contest. So um, it's great that people are taking advantage of them. And then uh, after a couple months, we went on to offering six-pack programs from crafts to fitness to all kinds of uh, activities for kids, for adults. And they've become so popular that we had to even increase the sessions because as soon as we put them up, they sold out. So we are basically going six days a week with running all type of six pack, you know, programs for the residents. And um, it gives them a, a little sense of normalcy. Right. Uh, and those, I, I will tell you, um, uh, recently, um, you know, by the time the show airs, is, it'll, you know, it'll been about a month from uh, the conversation that I had, but I actually had a resident reach out on one of the Teletown Hall meetings on Facebook as well, saying thank you for the six packs uh, because it's given a little sense of normalcy for my kids. Uh, and so, uh, and I know that we've done a lot of work in terms of filming uh, everything from like exercise classes to cooking classes to, um, um, you know, uh, other recreation activities that we've been broadcasting on this channel that are also available up on the website and on the YouTube. And uh, that's given a, a, another resource for our residents to be able to access and, and really kind of in a remote way. You don't really think of a, of a Parks and Recreation Department as a remote department, but uh, necessity, as they say, is the mother of invention and we had to change. And uh, certainly Clarkstown led the way. No other uh, town did the type of activities uh, that we did through uh, through your department uh, during COVID in Rockland County, and I'm very proud that we were able to really reach a lot of our residents that way. But as I said, you know, we're now coming out of COVID. You know, we're uh, opening up our community centers uh, shortly. Um, so maybe we can go into some of the things that are coming down the pike uh, with the uh, with the community centers and with the, the department itself. Well, we're going to be doing a soft opening right now. It's tentatively set for May 3rd where the, all the community centers will reopen, but each room and each space will be limited to, to numbers. We're gonna be going through in the next uh, couple days actually and seeing how what the capacity of each room will be. Uh, the stafe it will reopen, that will be limited to probably three or four people at a time. So, so the stafe it is the, the senior, it's a, it's a circuit of exercise equipment for senior citizens. Correct. And it's, um, 
Uh, it's kind of at the edge of the, uh, the corridor between the administration offices at the Parks and Rec and the rest of the street school where all the program activities are and the stay fit. Um, so typically in the past, before COVID, you, um, there's what, about a dozen stations in there? Yes. And um, so literally uh, there were seniors that could, and you could go there in the morning and there'd be like a dozen seniors in there. But obviously because of COVID, even with vaccines in place, we're going to limit it, uh, occupancy to probably about four people. Right, four people at a time. If you go through the circuit twice, it takes like a half hour. So um, we'll be able to, uh, you know, open that up. And that is the room that's strictly for seniors. Our other weight rooms and fitness rooms at, at Street School, I had the ability to pull out like a half a dozen pieces and bring them to another room and space them out. This way we can get more people working out at the same time for now. Right. So, so we did some great renovations at Street School. It's beautiful. Um, and we had that beautiful weight room. Uh, and what we ended up doing, uh, because of COVID now, we're taking half the equipment out across the hallway. So we've got two, you know, the weight room is now split between two rooms and we'll allow four residents in each room. So there'll still be able to be eight people to come work out, uh, you know, at the place, but only four per room. And then occupancy limits are going to be are set for all of the other rooms, correct? Right. They will be in our programs when we re-enter you know a little bit past the six pack maybe we'll jump to 10 max but everything initially is still going to be kept social distance right and we're still working on our plan with camps it's it's unclear if the school district are is going to give us uh, their buildings this year uh, coming because of issues with covid um, but we're going to we're plan is our, our plan is to move ahead with camps you know uh may be limited based on uh, our availability of buildings in the school district. So there, there is a plan in, in place for, for uh, at least smaller camps. Hopefully we'll get the school district building, so. Yep, we'll, we'll see, um, we'll, we have to figure out how many full day camps, how many half day camps. Um, we have the obviously where we're gonna have them. And I haven't received the guidelines yet from the state as to you know what their guidelines are for running camps but we're definitely going to offer something we just have to you know fine tune it once we get more information right. well we, we certainly have a, a a lot more certainty about some of the other summer activities we'll get to that in a minute but just talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that we are doing in the community centers now uh, to be prepared uh, we brought in the town brought in outside consulting through uh, Montefiore Medical Center so Montefiore Nyack has a uh, environmental facilities group that they sent to us. Uh, we spent several thousand dollars and they evaluated town hall, the police department, and all of our community centers. And they came out with a plethora of recommendations that uh, we are implementing, including HEPA filters, and, and we're kind of going through that. So the places will be safe when they do open on May 3rd. Uh, and uh, we're excited about people coming back and, and using our facilities. But what I'm really excited about is we've got a number of other things we're doing over the summer. So let's talk about some of the summer activities. The okay, pool, we are going to open the pools. Uh, all three pools will, will reopen this year. Um, Congress will be the first one opening the weekend of June 12th and 13th for weekends only. And Congress will have a new liner uh, put in and some upgrades to the bathhouse um, a little bit. And then on June 19th, which is Serendipity Day over at Germans Park, Congress pool will open full time that day, and that will be our one free day for all our residents to come in swimming. And then Germans will remain open full time as of June 19th. And then the following Saturday, the 26th, when school is out, Lake Nanuet, which is probably our biggest facility, um, will open on June 26th, and uh, all the pools will open through Labor Day. Yeah. And um, we are looking for lifeguards, too, right? Always. We're always looking for lifeguards. We have. Uh, probably in the 40s right now committed to return. We're still short, probably around 20 lifeguards, but we haven't done any water tests yet. Those are scheduled. So if anybody is considering being a lifeguard, um, they should definitely fill an application and sign up for one of our water tests because mm -hmm. that's the first step you know, to be hiring. Right, and um, so really excited. All three pools will be open. There's some additional work we're doing over Lake Nanuet where actually uh, repainting the um, uh, Lake Nanua pool and, and uh, obviously uh, cleaning everything up and having everything ready. So it'd be great to have our three pools up and running. Let's talk summer concerts. We've got two different summer concert series now. So um, let's talk about the uh, our, our traditional summer concert series and then we can talk about the lunchtime one 
that uh, you and I have been working on and, and that we have sponsored from Atrio. So let's start with the our traditional summer concert series. Our normal uh, s summer concert series uh, will kick off uh, the night of our fireworks over at, that's uh, July 1st and the rain date of July 2nd. And then uh, moving on, typically every Wednesday, we will have a concert through the majority of August. Um, there is one Tuesday night concert, which is the Nerds, because they have a steady Wednesday commitment. So, you know, it's a fan favorite up here in Clarkstown, so we, we bring them back. And we have a variety of different bands, you know, performing this year, some returners, some new. I like to change it up a little bit, and um, we're looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll get some good weather. That's going to be on the field at Nanuet. We were able to social distance um, the residents there, and uh, it turned out it was an eye-opener for us that, hey, this is a great facility. Why don't we just keep it here? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing that. And then uh, Atria, which is a new neighbor of ours, just opened on Main Street mm -hmm. and New City, and they're going to be sponsoring a lunchtime concert series on Fridays the month of July. So I'd like to thank them for partnering with us to do that. And so let's talk about that lunchtime concert series, because that's something that I've been interested in doing. We're starting in New City. I'm hoping in the future we'll be able to bring it to other downtown areas. But it's um, so what day is that going to be and what time is the new city? It's going to be Friday, 1215 to 145 on four Fridays, the four Fridays, the month of July, not obviously July 4th, you right. know, weekend. So, so, and that will actually be in Landau Park, which is right on the corner across from the Rockin County Courthouse, right on the corner of Congers uh, Lake Road and uh, at the edge of Main Street. And, um, you know, so we'll have a we'll have a band, you know, that will be in. Uh, they'll play, um, you know, kind of an outdoor concert type thing where uh, residents will be able to come, bring food. We'll have trash receptacles around, uh, and it'll be uh, just a great opportunity for people to come out and enjoy the outdoors uh, and enjoy some music. And we've never done that before, but it's and it's being sponsored by Atria, the new assisted living facility that um, uh, that's just opened up here in New City, right? Yep, it's, it, you know, it's great. It's not far from Town Hall, not far from the county office building, and hopefully we'll work with the Chamber of Commerce and some of the r restaurants in walking distance will take portable lunch packs that you can go order lunch in advance, pick it up, and then grab it and eat outside, have your lunch, and listen to some music. So hopefully the weather's good. Right, That's, that, that'll, that'll be a big thing. But we're really excited about that. It's a great opportunity for um, you know, for our residents to be able to enjoy you know some time outside. So it's a, and it's a new uh, type of event for us. Um, you know, again, uh, there's still a lot of things to be determined with the state still giving us uh, guidance in certain areas. But we know we're having the pools. We know the community centers are opening up. Um, we're having our summer concert series. We're planning on our July 4th fireworks as well. We've we've authorized that. Uh, again, all of these things will be done in a socially distant uh, manner. Our summer concert series, we moved it away from Jermon's over to Lake Nanuet. It'll stay at Lake Nanuet again this year. We're going to paint out the, the squares over on the ball field so people will know so that they can kind of keep a social distance. So even after, after you know, we're kind of through the worst part of COVID and vaccines are really starting to ramp up, um, you know, um, we're still going to make sure that we're putting social distance measures and these things in place. I think that's going to be common for us going forward. I think it's the new norm. Right. You know, that's the thing. We will, you know, make small steps and expand the, the numbers gradually. Mm -hmm. And then as long as things remain safe with the numbers we're doing, then a little time passes. We'll, we'll expand a little more, you right. know, just to get back to the new normal. Right. And, and I know the other thing that we're working on is uh, final dates for when we can start to bring our senior clubs back. One of the issues, though, is that uh, capacity limits, right, in some of our programs, right? No, we have certain clubs that have over 100 people in attendance. And, you know, the way it stands now with the six feet apart, you're looking at two people per per table. So our numbers, if if they remain, you know, as popular as they have been in the past, that's a consideration where, you know, we're going to have to may delay things a little bit right. further out because we can't handle the capacity, you know, of mm -hmm. people attending a meeting with those large numbers. Right, and, and we're also looking at um, the guidelines recently from the CDC that if two vaccinated people are, are, are together, they don't have to wear masks. So obviously the more people that are vaccinated, the better. Um, and so it's, it's certainly something that I, we expect further guidance to be coming from both the federal government and the state government, but as we move forward with 
waiting for that additional guidance, I think that um, you know we're going to plan accordingly. But uh, hopefully, all of our seniors are going to get vaccinated, and it'll make it easier for us to uh, to be a little more relaxed and, and maybe not um, not have some of the issues we're dealing with. But we know of at least one or two clubs where we're going to have a significant problem just because of capacity limits, correct? Right, yes, and one of the things we're in the process of, of doing, probably done by the time this airs, is we're going to send a survey out to the senior members asking them if they have had their vaccine, if they plan on having their vaccine, and if they would feel comfortable sitting at a table with somebody who was not vaccinated. So once we get a little more information about the people we're dealing with and who intends to come back, we can make a, a better educated decision on the right. safety of all the seniors. Right. So Elaine, a lot of other, you'll have other things. We'll have our car shows and, and what have you, you know, coming up, but uh, just a lot of activity going on with the Parks and Rec. It's been a challenging time. I want to thank you for your leadership and your efforts. If folks want to find out more, um, how can they get more information about uh, the things we've been talking about? They can about? call the Recreation and Parks number at 639-6200 or just go on to the town website for Recreation and Parks and everything is there. Um, we did not put and we will not put a brochure out this year on the website because things are forever changing and we don't have all the exact information. But we um, put out an email blast. If you, we don't have your email and you want to join us, please call the department and let us know. We'll add you. We put everything on Facebook as well as the Town of Clarkstown Recreation of Parks. So feel free to reach out with new ideas, suggestions, or you know if you'd like to be on our mailing list. Great. Okay, well, Elaine, thanks for uh, uh, working with me these last, you know, six years now, and um, thanks for your 40 years of service to the town of Clarkstown uh, in the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, and we look forward to, you know, continuing to work together on as we start to prepare for the new normal and really get Clarkstown up and running again with uh, going from virtual Parks and Rec to now, uh, you know, uh, in-person Parks and Rec. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, George. Thanks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.